Hello everybody, welcome back to the layout. While the toilet paper uh, in the lake um, is still drying, I have started on another project in this uh, corner of the layout uh, here. So what I am uh, planning for a scene here is that um, I want to place uh, an oil pump a donkey nodder or a nodding donkey or uh, I think the official technical term is a saccharot uh, pump so I, will, I want to place that over here and then have like an oil tank and pipelines and stuff like that in this little corner here and as you can see I've drawn in um, lines um, for a road and so the plan is to have a road going by this scene with the oil pump and then I want to model uh, some more mountains here <clears throat> and let um, the road disappear into a tunnel here. I cut out a template uh, from paper that uh, illustrates the outline of the mountains that I'm going to place against the backdrop here. So again, here is the, uh, the road that will disappear into a tunnel entrance uh, over here. And then what I will try to do is um, sort of model the mountains more or less in the same way as I've done these ones. But different in the way that um, I want to try and mimic sort of this cascading effect. So I've cut out uh, some pieces of uh, polystyrene uh, foam uh, using the paper template. And again, uh, the tunnel entrance will be here, so I'll be cutting it out uh, in this uh, location over here. Um, obviously, there is not enough space uh, here, uh, but that is because I haven't placed uh, the blocks uh, against the backdrop. So I need to uh, I need to cut away uh, part of parts of those uh, rocks over there. Um, and then I'll start modeling the mountains from there. So they will be a bit higher uh, than these three layers of uh, foam. Um, so I want to model two peaks. By cutting out uh, this little piece here, which is, which is this piece here, I can now uh, put this piece of foam in place like that. And so then that can form the base of the mountain. That I so I've glued seven layers of foam on top of each other. And as you can see, the top four are a bit smaller than uh, just a little bit than the bottom three. And so now I want to try and um, cut out a mountain with two peaks and then hopefully if let me remove this we'll get two peaks through which uh, it is still possible to see uh, the mountains uh, painted in the background This is the base shape of the mountain that I ended up with. And as you can see, uh, the mountains are painted on the background. They can still be seen. Also, in between the two peaks in the foreground, you can still see the mountain uh, painted on the backdrop. So that's what I was after. And so one of the features I added in the base shape was um, a sort of fault line here and if you look at it from this side uh, it really gets a 3d a three-dimensional uh, uh, character and um, I like it a lot I think it's uh, it turned out uh, nice um, so the next thing is to add more texture and make it look uh, more rock like and this is the texture that I ended up with uh, for this mountain. So as you can see, I didn't add uh, really a lot of texture, just a few places. Uh, 
And now the next thing uh, that I'm going to do is to uh, carve out or cut out uh, the tunnel in this location here. So I cut out uh, the tunnel. It's um, about uh, four, four and a half centimeters uh, in width and five and a half, six centimeters in height. So that should be uh, a realistic uh, tunnel uh, for cars and small trucks, I think. So let me show you how I've carved it out. Um, so the reason for carving it out uh, like this is that in this way you sort of get the illusion that uh, the tunnel is uh, making a turn to the left and then disappears off. So at least that's the effect I'm trying to achieve here. I have uh, started uh, painting the mountain as you can see, so it's still wet. And I have used uh, three colors for that. So all three are uh, earth colors from uh, Woodland Scenics. And the colors I used are burnt umber, stone gray and raw umber. And I uh, try to get uh, a bit of a patchy uh, effect. So different colors in different uh, locations. We'll see how this turns out, but uh, I can already see that, uh, for example, uh, spots like these, I will need a second coat and maybe even a third one. All right, so I applied a second layer of paint uh, on the mountain. This time uh, I applied um, a watered down, a very thin uh, layer of paint with only one color, which is the stone gray. And uh, the reason for making it very thin is that uh, I want some of the colors uh, from the first layer to show through. The second layer has dried now. And as you can see, the mountain is still quite dark. And uh, the other two colors uh, from the first layer are still coming through in different areas. And actually, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do uh, next with the colors. Um, I think it turned out maybe a little bit too dark, also compared to the other mountains over there. So I think I'm going to um, tone it down a bit and make it a bit lighter. So I made this uh, mixture here, which is uh, a mixture of white and stone grey, and uh, I also watered it down so it's quite thin. And I think I'm going to try this uh, on the mountain, Let's see if I can make it a bit lighter. So what I'm doing is I'm dabbing uh, the lighter color on with a, with a brush like this and then I take a, a piece of kitchen uh, towel kitchen paper and just take off quite a bit like this so then I'm keeping uh, a bit of the lighter color and that should make the whole mountain uh, look uh, much lighter. So just uh, checking it uh, in the place where it will be and I think you can clearly see the color difference. So I think uh, I'm going to continue with that. The next thing is uh, to dry brush uh, some white 
on the edges of the mountain and I started doing that already uh, in this area here and I think uh, that gives it a really realistic uh, look so and that's just uh, dry brushing it on just uh, showing you how I'm doing the dry brushing so I'm taking just a little bit of uh, titanium white on the brush and then brush very 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 gently very softly over the edges so that just a little bit of paint sticks to the edges and that gives the desired effect So it's quite a tedious job, it takes uh, quite a bit of time, so it's just a matter of being patient. And two hours later that's a uh, job done. As I said it was quite tedious. I think the result uh, looks really good. So I'm quite happy with this. So this is the oil tank uh, kit that I will be using uh, for the oil pump uh, scene. And there are only uh, a few parts uh, in this kit that need to be cut out and glued together. I have uh, assembled the oil tank and I've given it a spray of uh, grey primer. And I've done the same for the other parts as well. So now it's just a matter of uh, painting it and putting it uh, all together. So I've painted uh, the oil tank and all the other parts uh, that belong to it. Um, so to start with the oil tank. So I had given it a, a grayish primer as you have seen. And I spray painted a cream white color um, as a finishing layer so the color I used was yeah it's cream it's, yeah it's not easy to see but it's just off-white and so then the other parts this is the pump that will sit in front of the tank and then there's a couple of uh, pipelines that will go from the tank to the pump. I've also um, printed out and cut out uh, two uh, decals, which will go on either side of, uh, of the tank. So what's remaining now is uh, the weathering and glue it all together. This is the tank all finished and weathered. As you can see, uh, the first thing I did was uh, make it look really dirty. And um, I also glued on a decal, uh, which um, I made look uh, really rusty to sort of mimic the effect that this is a, a metal uh, sign. On the side of the tank and then here on this side um, I uh, gave the appearance of uh, oil spill from the tank so this is heavy oil dripping down the tank and the same was done on the other side as well so the dirty look of the tank is uh, achieved by um, brushing on this uh, modeling pigment 
and then the rust uh, effect uh, on the decals is uh, obtained by uh, applying these colors so it's just a very very little bit that I put on but uh, I think the overall effect is uh, is quite nice I, I like it a lot and then in addition we have uh, the pump so let me show you so so how that will sit so that will sit like this so there's two pipes uh, going uh, into the tank and then the other one is an offloading uh, pipe with a hose at the end so that's for offloading into a truck and this is where uh, the tank will be sitting uh, on the layout so it will be more or less in this location and now the idea is that uh, in front of it so right here I will be placing an oil pump now the oil pump uh, I did uh, order but um, it turned out it was not in stock and so uh, the order was turned into a back order uh, and in the end um, I had to reorder it again which I did now so um, probably it will take uh, two weeks or so uh, before that will arrive so I'm going to wrap uh, this video up here and uh, I hope uh, in not too long time I'll be able to show you a finished uh, scene here with the oil pump in place as well.